So I've got it all ready. I've got all my borders on. I've pin basted it. I've got a yummy backing on the back. And um, I've popped a label on ready already so that when it's quilted it's all included. And I quite often like to use some of the selvages in my label. So that's already on the back. It's pin basted with safety pins. So I can take them out as I go. So here is the quilt already ready to quilt. So I'll be showing you how I do some of the quilting as well. I'm going to be free motioning. So I've set my machine up. I've dropped my feed teeth, got my free motion foot on. And uh, I'll show you how I'm going to be doing some of that. So I quite like to do my uh, a lot of my straight quilting, even by free motion. So I've gone around the inside of the block. And then I started here and I can go around there, skip on to here, come along here, skip along here, and then click straight onto the red and go all the way around, skip up the mitre. So you can do most of that in one go and then finish off. And then I come back and I do some work on the box. So I'll just go through that process a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, I'll start off in the center with that just that little square in the middle so uh, my lines are almost straight because they're free motion they do wobble a little bit sometimes So now that I've done that centre bit, I'm going to start near the mitre, but still on the, the centre square, so that we can outline that little bug square. You need to keep the quilting a fairly even amount all over the quilt. So you can't have too many big areas that are not quilted. do all of this uh, with your walking foot but you do have to turn the quilt and you'll notice I'm not having to turn the quilt at all doing it free motion like this so now I've got back to the start there and I'm just going to skip on to without stopping or anything right onto the mitre and then go around the, the gray area Now I'm going to skip up the mitre and get onto the red without stopping and starting again. And now I'm going to skip along the mitre again. These mitres are great. To do this second round on the red. Do a little couple of stitches on top of each other to, to lock it and then that's that's that part of it done but there is still a section to do of the actual box you just need to stop and start to be able to get onto that so we'll move on to that now
I've finished quilting the quilt and now I'm just trimming off all this extra that we don't need so that I can put the binding on. It's so exciting, we just about got there. These delicious bugs and critters fabrics are just quivering around. So that's all done. Now I've just got to do um, the binding and I've got my binding all ready. So I've got that here. So I've joined all my strips up. I'm using the stripe and I've joined them on the diagonal so that you get that nice thing. I haven't tried to match this, the stripes again. I think it's not going to be a problem when we do the binding like that. And on the end that I'm beginning, I've pressed over just the corner ready for me to start. So I'm going to be starting um, and I'm going to be stitching my binding to the back of my quilt um, because I'm going to be rolling it forward and stitching it down by machine onto the front. If you want to slip stitch it by hand, you would want to be sewing it to the front of the quilt and then you'll take it to the back and hand sew it that way. But I'm going to machine mine on. So I'm just going to get ready and I'll show you how I go about that. So I've got my quilt ready. I've got my folded back bit uh, sitting on the quilt, right, lining up all the raw edges. And I'm just going to stitch a little bit of, along here. So I'll just start with a little back stitch, just along to the end of that folded triangle. Finish it off. I take the that out and then I'm going to fold that over so that it's folded so that all the raw edges are even and I'm just going to leave from from where that folded corner comes in I'm going to leave a couple of inches so that when the binding comes around I can tuck the other end in and then I'm just going to start here so I'm just using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to go around. I'll go down to a corner and show you how I do the corners I like to fold my binding as I go. Some people I know prefer to press theirs first. Okay, so I'm coming up to a corner here. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to stop stitching about a quarter of an inch before the end or the edge of my quilt. So I want to, to do that. You may want to put a pin in and I'm going to do a little back stitch when I get there. And I'm going to take that out of the machine and then I'm going to turn the quilt around and I'm going to fold this binding now diagonally through the corner so right at the corner and diagonally through and then I'm going to flip it back so that the fold now is level with the, the quilt edge and then I'm going to turn that and I'm just going to start sewing right from the edge and all the way along until I get to the next corner. So that you've got this funny little foldy bit and that will allow you to have a nice little mitre in your binding um, when we turn it around the other way, which I'll show you when we get there. So I've just got my last few inches to go here and I'll just show you how that tucks in where we started. So exciting, it's getting closer and closer. Okay, so now I'm just going to overlap that first bit that we stitched down and open out the bit that was folded over and I've cut the binding uh, so that it'll just tuck inside there and then so tuck that end in so leave it as long as you reasonably can in there and then bring that edge over and then we just keep sewing right over that join there. Back to where we started. So that's the first stage of the binding that's now on so that's pretty good so all I now need to do is turn that over because I'm going to machine it down if you were going to hand stitch it down you would have stitched yours onto the front of the quilt not the back because I'm doing mine by machine I'm going to stitch it onto the I'll stitch it onto the back and I'm going to now stitch it down to the front so I'll just uh, it doesn't really matter where you start and stop with this I'm just going to bring that over to the front and we'll get to a little corner just up here so that you can just see how the corners work. I'll probably start it a bit far away. Okay, so the corner is approaching now. So I'm going to bring the 
the binding around and when I get close to the corner I want to keep this line coming straight ahead right out to the edge and then fold that in and so you'll find that it'll automatically give you a nice little mitre. Now if you're not sure that you can hold that while you sew you can pop a pin in that and I'm just going to hold mine because I haven't got any pins and then make sure the needle's in the little folded down bit so that you can leave the needle down and pivot with the needle still in place turn the quilt around and then I like to just do a little back stitch over that corner and then I just keep going all the way around and that's how I do all the corners and I'll end up pretty much back where I started shortly. So here we have it, we have one finished bugs in boxes. Now how much fun is that? So we've got these nice sort of like little shadow boxes and the bugs are inside. These bugs and critters fabric uh, by Nutex are just delicious. Um, I'm not a big fan of bugs and creepy crawlies myself, however, when I see them on the fabric like this, they're not too bad at all. So there we have uh, bugs in boxes um, and enjoy making it yourself. Thank you.